Hey buddy, Tofu Game again. Today our subject is still Pal World. Guess what's buzzing in the gaming world today? Pal World. It's on fire. Can you believe it? This game has hit 20 million downloads on Steam and even snagged the title of being the second game in Steam history to reach over 2 million concurrent players. Crazy, right? Pal World was released on January 19th, and it's been causing quite a stir. I mean, it's the second game ever after Playrung Noun's Battlegrounds to breach 2 million concurrent players. Pocket Pair seems to have a real winner on their hands like Fortnite or Minecraft vibes, you know? But here's the thing, not everyone is thrilled, especially the Pokemon series fans. Some folks on Twitter are throwing shade at Pal World, claiming it depicts slavery and animal cruelty. There's even talk about the game allegedly stealing character designs and assets from Pokemon. If you scroll through certain corners of the platform, you'll stumble upon a bunch of negative opinions. People are throwing accusations left and right, claiming that the game depicts slavery and animal cruelty. Some are even suggesting that those adorable pals might be made with AI magic. But wait, there's more. The main accusation causing a stir is the claim that Palworld is blatantly stealing character designs and assets from Pokemon. Can you imagine the uproar in the gaming community? Tease like people are wondering. What's up with these Palworld creators? Haven't they heard about Nintendo's history with copyright battles? I mean, Nintendo is notorious for taking legal action and shutting down games that even hint at infringing on their copyrights. They don't mess around. The phrase Nintendo lawsuit has practically become an internet meme, right? They've gone after fan-made versions, free mods, you name it. So, with all this drama around Palworld allegedly swiping designs from Pokemon, it's no surprise that some folks are raising their eyebrows and waiting for Nintendo to step in. By the time I made this video, it looked like the Palworld fever might be cooling down a bit. After that explosive start, the player numbers have taken a dip, and it seems like the initial excitement is settling. Since Palworld launched, the concurrent player peaks took a bit of a dive on Steam. According to SteamDB, the most recent daily peak is sitting at 512,859, down from the impressive 2,101,867 shortly after launch that's a 75% decrease. Oh, the Pokemon owners playing it cool, huh? It's like they released a statement saying, hey, we're checking out this whole Palworld situation, and we might take some action, and then, Crickets. No lawsuits, no drama, just radio silence. The Pokemon fans must be feeling a bit let down, right? I mean, they're used to seeing Nintendo flex its legal muscles, but this time around, it's like they're taking a laid-back approach. It's gotta be a bit of a head-scratcher for the Pokemon faithful. What are your thoughts on Pokemon not making any major moves against Palworld? Do you think they're plotting something behind the scenes, or is it a surprising twist in the copyright drama? Let's unravel this mystery together. As I said in my video before, while there might be similarities between the monsters in Palworld and Pokemon, it's crucial to distinguish between inspiration and outright plagiarism. It's a fine line, and without concrete proof, it can be challenging to make a case against Pocket Pair. It's always fascinating to dive into these discussions about creativity, inspiration, and the thin line between between homage and infringement. What's your take on the whole situation? In my opinion, the Pokemon and the PAL play a significant role in setting each game apart and catering to different gaming experiences. The foundational premise of PAL World does sound reminiscent of the classic Pokemon series formula. The idea of being a teenager in a vibrant yet challenging environment, surrounded by adorable creatures pals in this case that you can befriend, tame, and then use in battles is a familiar concept from the Pokemon games we've known and loved for decades. In Pokemon, you're that adventurous kid embarking on a grand journey to explore a mystery continent, forming bonds with your Pokemon as companions. It's all about the warm and fuzzy feelings, right? And hey, when Pokemon faint, they're not gone forever. They just need a good nap or a visit to the Pokemon Center. It's like a nod to that nostalgic feeling of setting out on a journey to capture and train creatures, but with Palworld, it seems they've taken that concept and thrown in a dash of industrial and combat elements giving it a distinct flavor. No leisurely safaris here. You're catching these cute pals and putting them to work in the mines and lumber fields armed with machine guns. It's like Pac-Mon meets Industrial Revolution meets Battlefield Chaos. 
Palworld takes a sharp turn away from the cozy vibes of Pokemon, embracing a more intense and action-packed experience. The whole concept of using pals for crafting, building, and expanding your dominion is quite a departure from the Pokemon formula. It adds a layer of strategy and conquest to the gameplay. What's your take on these distinct approaches? Do you prefer the traditional Pokemon journey, or are you intrigued by the unique twists Palworld brings to the table? I think we have an answer now. Yeah, Palworld is not as hot as January, but it's not all doom and gloom. Palworld is still rocking the charts as the third biggest game on Steam. I mean, 500,000 concurrent players still put it in the top 15 peaks in the platform's entire history. If Pokemon owner listen to their fan and make some changes, Palworld will never make a hit like this. It's highly unlikely that Nintendo would simply sit back and watch a potentially infringing or counterfeit product surpass them in success. Nintendo is known for being vigilant and proactive when it comes to protecting their intellectual property and brand. If they believe that Palworld is indeed infringing on their copyrights or posing a threat to their brand, it's reasonable to expect that Nintendo might take legal action. This could involve issuing cease and desist orders, segging lawsuits, or engaging in negotiations with the developers of Palworld. Nintendo has a track record of actively defending their properties, and the gaming community is well aware of the company's history of legal actions against games that they perceive as infringing on their intellectual property. Before we dive in, a quick legal disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, and this podcast is not legal counsel. There are three pillars of intellectual property, patents, trademarks, and copyright. Patents, dealing with specific ideas or designs, don't play a significant role in the PAL world situation. However, trademarks representing the brand and its identifiers and copyright protecting the expression of ideas are crucial. It sounds like PAL world is playing a strategic game when it comes to navigating the legal landscape surrounding Nintendo and the Pokemon company's intellectual property. By steering clear of direct use of trademark names, titles, and recognizable characters like Pikachu, they aim to sidestep trademark infringement concerns. In essence, PAL World seems to be carefully maneuvering through legal complexities. By introducing unique gameplay elements and considering intellectual property boundaries, they aim to exist in a legal gray area, avoiding blatant infringement while still drawing on the familiarity and appeal of the Pokemon like creatures. It's a delicate dance in the world of fan games and intellectual property, and it will be intriguing to see how this strategic approach holds up in the face of potential legal scrutiny. Many games draw inspiration from existing ideas and build upon them to create something new and exciting. It's a natural part of the creative process and contributes to the evolution of the gaming industry. The Freddy Five Nights series, for example, brought a unique horror experience to the gaming world, and its success has undoubtedly influenced and inspired other developers. The Poppy Playtime series might have emerged as a result of that creative ripple effect, introducing its own twists and innovations. This exchange of ideas and the evolution of concepts is not only prevalent in the gaming industry but across various forms of art and entertainment. It's a testament to the dynamic and collaborative nature of creativity, where each new creation builds upon what came before. What are some other games or series that you think have successfully taken existing ideas and transformed them into something fresh and captivating? Let's explore the rich tapestry of gaming creativity together. K, thanks for watching my video. I am looking forward to catching you on the next podcast. Take care and happy gaming. See you soon.